to Spyberry by spy fans for spy fans with Shane Whaley. Shane dives into the mystery and intrigue of spy books and movies, both fact and fiction, delivering reviews and interviews with authors, historians, intelligence experts, and spy fans. He discusses everything from John le Carre, Len Dayton, Ian Fleming, Tom Clancy, Brad Thor, and many more. If you love spy books and movies, keep listening. This podcast is for you. This is Spy Prairie. Hello and welcome to episode 104, 104 of the Spy Prairie podcast. Coming up shortly, we have a brush pass that's been sent in by Matthew Crassel down at Station A in the great state of Alabama. Before we get on to his brush pass, a couple of very quick announcements for you. First of all, from today on, if you send in a brush pass and we use it, you will receive a $10 US dollar Amazon voucher, which hopefully, being a Spybarian, you'd go and spend on another book that you might want to review for us. So uh, that's just a little incentive for you. And it is made possible by the Reptile Fund. That's right. Otherwise known as Patreon. And if you want to be a Patreon supporter, you can find more details about that over at spybury.com forward slash Patreon. Whilst we're on the subject of the Reptile Fund, uh, this week I went out and bought a new mixer desk. I won't get into everything that Q told me it can do, but it can do a lot. Not sure if it works underwater yet. Don't think it's magnetic. Don't think, well, I'm hoping one of these buttons isn't an ejector seat because we're in serious trouble. So if ever I disappear on air, you know it's not Brad and Tom and Mark that have got me. It's the uh, added ejector button seat that Q has added to this mixer desk. What it does mean, though, is I can do a lot more with round tables. I can even call people directly from the desks if we just wanted to have a quick conversation with someone. I can play a lot more interviews. There's a lot more functionality, and you'll see that as we go along. And that's a big thank you to all of you who've contributed to the, the Patreon fund. I really do appreciate it. Coming up, Actually, on the topic of new formats and shows, I'm launching the John le Carre Movie Club series. That idea came to me because I recognize that book clubs are great, but if we were to start reading, say, um, Tinker Taylor, that's going to interrupt your own personal reading. You've got to dedicate time to that. Not that it's ever a chore to read a le Carre book. Well, not most of them. Um, <laughs> um, but I just figured two hours, two and a half hours to watch a movie. We can all do that. Let's all comment on a thread on the Facebook group. Also, if you send in a recording, and there'll be details about that with this new gizmo I've got, uh, I can play your comments and the panel can hear it and then discuss what you had to say. So even if you're unable to be a panelist or we can't make it work because of time zones, you can still play a part in the show. So uh, I'm really, really excited about what we can do with Spybury now we've got this uh, new mixing desk. So again, thank you to all you patrons. And uh, here's Sam McCready. It's a brush pass, quick and simple. You are listening to Brush Pass on Spybury. Quick reviews sent in by Spy Fans for Spy Fans. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be. This is Matthew Kressel in North Alabama reporting in again with a brush pass of a novel I've recently finished. It's the thriller Parting Shot by James Kanetka, first published in 1991 and given a Kindle release back in 2016. It opens in 1991 with a London construction crew busy at work before coming across something quite strange beneath the city, something that turns out to have all the hallmarks of being a crude atomic bomb. To make matters worse, evidence suggests that what they found has not only been there for decades, but is of Nazi origin. Deputy Home Minister Edmund Ramsden, a British civil servant on the edge of retirement, starts following a paper trail, one leading back to the last days of the Second World War. Back then, as the Manhattan Project neared its objective of building America's first atomic weapons, a young physicist from Detroit is busy helping with that effort. Philip Cavanaugh is as surprised as anyone when he attracts the attention of the project's bosses, Robert Oppenheimer and Army General Leslie Groves. 
Finding himself brought from Los Alamos to Washington, Kavanaugh finds himself recruited for a special mission by Groves to go to the Soviet-occupied zone in a recently defeated Germany to investigate what seems to be an atomic laboratory. His journey, which will take him from wartime Washington and London to the heart of that Soviet zone, uncovers an effort by Hitler to spit from his grave and strike revenge at the otherwise victorious Allied powers. Now, here, it might be worth mentioning Konecka's other works as a writer. In the world of nonfiction, his works include a book about Los Alamos, called City of Fire, and a biography of Oppenheimer, entitled The Years of Risk, released about a decade before Parting Shot came out. As a novelist, he co-wrote with Whitley Strieber a book called War Day, published in 1984, a haunting and sobering account of America in the aftermath of a limited nuclear war with the Soviet Union, a book I read in my teens and still parts of it stick with me to this day. So Koneka clearly is a fellow who knows his stuff, but does that mean he can write a good thriller? It turns out, maybe it does. Koneka's background with Los Alamos and the early history of nuclear weapons shines throughout the book. Whether it's young Kavanaugh's interactions with the likes of Oppenheimer and Groves, or the portrayal of increasing distrust between America and Britain on matters atomic, there's a fine sense of authenticity to proceedings. Indeed, that air extends to the secret German project that lies at the core of the novel's plot, in which Konecka creates a plausible way in which the facts we know about the Nazi atomic bomb project could still be true, at least as far as those involved with the project knew. After all, the Third Reich was known for having different groups working on developing versions of the same weapon systems, after all. Konecka's skills as a novelist are apparent elsewhere as well. Using Ramston in 1991 as a framing device, the novel follows a similar arc to books like Jack Higgins' The Eagle Has Landed or Duncan Kyle's The King's Commissar, using a present-day investigation to fill in the gaps in the narrative set in the past. It allows a peeling back of a veil at a time, taking reader and characters alike further and further down a path, meaning that even though the reader knows certain things couldn't have happened, we're left wondering just what did back in 1945. Even better is that Koneka manages to avoid some of the pitfalls of going down that route, managing to keep the tension high as we race headlong towards the novel's conclusion. That doesn't mean that this is a perfect novel, of course. Some of the characterizations feel a bit wooden at times, especially with secondary characters like some of the British intelligence folks Kavanaugh encounters in London. There's also a subplot concerning the young physicist's blooming romance with a woman at the Pentagon attached to the Manhattan Project there, which is charming to be sure, but also feels rather forced, like a genre trope that's there because someone told Koneka it needed to be. Finally, as plausible as Kavanaugh's actions are as a fish out of water are for something akin to like 90% of the novel, the last major action sequence seems a little too convenient, given what this physicist finds himself up against. Now, these aren't fatal flaws by any means, and I wouldn't be offering up this brush pass if they were, but they do serve to weaken the book to an extent. On the whole, however, Parting Shot is a good read. It's a compelling retro techno thriller. To quote a publisher's weekly review I came across at one point, it is without a doubt the most plausible Nazi atomic bomb tale I've yet come across, and is worth checking out on that basis alone. As someone who enjoys a good World War II thriller, you can't ask for much more than that, especially for three ninety nine on Kindle. I think I'll leave things there, so until next time... Be seeing you. And a big thank you, Matthew, for sending us in that brush pass. A $10 Amazon gift voucher is on its way to you. And if you're sat there thinking, I really want to do a brush pass, but I'm worried about stuttering and muttering and umming and ahhing, you know, you know, I do it all the time. <laughs> and Spybury is by spy fans, you know, for spy fans, you know. Um, so if we all do it. Don't worry about it. Send it in. I've always said this about Brush Pass. It's like you're telling me in the pub or you're telling other people about a book you've read and why you've enjoyed it or a movie you've seen or a TV series. So just get your phone out, record it. A couple of minutes doesn't have to be too long. Shane at spybree.com. And we'll play it here on the show. And hopefully we get to discuss it on our Facebook group, which I urge you all to join, which you can find at spybree.com forward slash Facebook. And 
you pull off a brush pass, send in your review to shane at spybrary.com. for listening to the Spybrary podcast. You don't have to wait for the next episode. Join the conversation happening now at facebook.com slash spybrary and on Twitter at spybrary. Was that all right, Q? No, I haven't blown it up. No, it's fine. It's still a light. It's, the lights are flashing. I think we recorded a show. It didn't get wet. No, no one shot at it. No, I think it's working. For now. <laughs>